Good morning. Good to see each and every one of you. This is amazing. Everyone's in their seat already. We're getting used to this, and that's a wonderful thing. We're looking forward to a great day in the house of the Lord. We've had a great weekend thus far. We praise the Lord for what He's doing, and it's glad, I'm glad to say we're in the house of the Lord. Are you glad? Yes. Wonderful. Are you glad to be saved? Yes. Great. It's better to be saved than it is to be in the house of the Lord, but you get both. My goodness, what could happen? And so uh, we look forward to what God's going to do. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Lord God, I pray that you would be with us this morning. May we honor you. May we please you in everything that is said, everything that is done. And Lord, we pray that we'll do it as unto the Lord, and not unto ourselves, not unto other people, but Lord, that we would honor you well. Be with our pastor. I pray that you'll give him a, a great message to share with us, that we're already getting our heart prepared. May it already have begun within us, so that we're ready to receive exactly what you want for us to apply. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Aren't you glad God is faithful this morning? Will you stand with us this morning as we sing Blessed Assurance? I'm going to throw a curveball at you this morning. We're going to sing the first verse, the second verse, and then the chorus. So follow us this morning. Here we go. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here is salvation, purchase of God. Second, perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now first on my side. Jesus descending, free from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song.
Morning, church. I'd invite you to take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 146 as we do our scripture reading today. Psalm 146. And this is a psalm of praise. You see the bookends here in the first and last verse. And let's read it. You silently, and I'll read aloud. In Psalm 146, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth the Lord looseth the prisoners, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that are bowed down, the Lord loveth the righteous, the Lord preserveth the strangers, he relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for all that you are and all that you've done. You've made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them, and yet you keep truth, Lord, and you keep us. Thanks for providing for us. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. may remain seated as we sing. Continue our worship this morning as we sing. The mystery of the cross I cannot find.
Come ringing, oh the restless waves in the light, in the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, in the light, in the light, in the light. The blessed gospel, I let it shine from shore to shore. In the light, the blessed gospel, I let it shine forevermore. church said amen. Amen. Wow, you really welcomed me today. You had 97 degree weather, tent kind of, tent revival kind of music. What happened to this church in a couple of weeks? Oh man. Good morning church. Sure good to see everybody. Don and I have missed you and we're glad to be back in town. Uh, we're leaving again tonight. 
we just don't want you to get used to us, you know? And uh, you know how that is, right? But uh, we're, we're, uh, we're excited to be here. We're leaving tonight because we have to go and, and kind of finish things up uh, back down in the great state of Florida. And um, we're going to be uh, loading up the truck and moving to Beverly next week, you know? Uh, right? And so we're, uh, we're, we're excited. We're thrilled about it. And uh, I want to thank those who have been so faithful uh, here uh, just all the time, but just recently we have so many, had so many people just step up and do some work. Uh, they're renovating an office for me, and then uh, they're making, uh, they rebuilt the parsonage, you know, and, uh, and so every time I walk in the door, something's changed, you know, and so I'm just kind of going with it. I don't have a choice, I guess, right? You know, <laughs> they say, well, mama's happy. That's what I'm told, you know, and so, and so we're excited about it. And I trust you're doing well. Uh, I know there's been a couple of things over the last couple of weeks. You know, even though I'm not here, um, I stay in very close contact with what's going on here. Uh, I talk with the staff all the time and the deacons all the time. And so I know we've had, uh, we've had some things happen over the past few weeks that uh, Don and I have been praying for, praying for the Bongiorno family. Are they here this morning? Danielle and John, we've been praying for them. I know they had a, a death in the family. And uh, we were praying for them each day. And I know uh, Brother Tyler stepped up and, and the church stepped up and were able to help them during their time. And so we rejoice in, in, in that. And then also, I, I'm not sure if you knew this, but, but our sister Floss here had a pretty serious car accident. Did you know that? Her car was totaled. And uh, she walked away without a scratch. And so we're sure, we're, we're sure thankful for that. Uh, but, you know, she needs a church right now. She really, really needs us to step up and be a blessing to her. So let's not forget our sister. Um, she had her car for 17 years, and it was her little girl. And she told me this morning, so, Pastor, I took such good care of her. And, um, and, and you know, it was taken away from her. And, uh, and so um, she doesn't have a vehicle now, and she's kind of on fixed income, and so she can't afford to get a vehicle. So let's pray for her. And uh, if you got an old little girl in your garage you're not using no more, it could be a Model T, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Floss isn't that particular, you know. Uh, but we want to let her know that we love her, right? You know, we, we're a family. And when one hurts, everybody hurts. When one rejoices, everybody rejoices, right? And so let her know that you're thinking about her, praying for her, and you want to help her in any way possible. And then also we're praying for the Mallon family. I know Valerie's, was it Mallory's um, uh, mother took ill, right? And so we're praying for the Mallon family as well. Amen. Aren't you glad the Bible tells us that Jesus is coming again? Amen. Maybe morning and maybe noon, maybe evening, but surely soon. <laughs> I'm glad, aren't you? And uh, we're told that when we get to where we're going, it's going to be okay. In my Father's house, right? And so we're looking forward to that. Well, take your Bibles, if you would. Join me in the Gospel of Mark chapter 5 this morning. Mark chapter number 5. And uh, we, got a, we got a busy morning. At the end of service this morning, uh, I want you to just just relax for a minute or two. We have some folks we want to recognize and a couple of things that we want to say. We got some uh, folks we're going to welcome in the membership uh, at the end of service today, give the right hand of fellowship to. And so we want you to stay with us just for uh, a little bit at the end of the service. Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter. Are you there? Good. You know, the gospels contain um, some masterpiece stories. You know what I mean by that, right? I mean, they're just masterpieces. Um, and many of them are a record of the public ministry of Jesus. You know, when you read through the gospel accounts, you see uh, the life and times of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's where his ministry begins, right? He's baptized by John the baptizer, and he begins his ministry, and the record of his ministry is fascinating. In fact, sometimes it's just hard to take in, isn't it? You know, I, for one, wish I could have just been a fly on a wall just to witness some of the things that took place. I mean, miraculous. We read about it and we get the goosebumps. Just imagine being there. 
And, uh, and, and what, what, what these lessons or stories contain, uh, if you look deep, if you read it carefully, and if you study it, what these stories contain are life lessons, right? Many of them are parables, you know, and maybe one day we'll do a study on the parables and dig deep and find out some life lessons. But these lessons are there for you and I to learn, and they're there, they're there to help us on our journey. You know, uh, the Christian life is a journey of faith, right? Uh, we are, look here, we are not being trained to stay here forever. We're being trained to live up there. Uh, this is an education for heaven. Isn't that right? Uh, and everything we learn here, we're learning uh, to, to put in, in place here, but also to help us uh, to have a better arrival and a better life when we get to eternity, right? And so some of these lessons that we learn are to help us in our journey of faith. And that's where we're on, a journey of faith. And we find one of those stories here in the Gospel of Mark chapter number 5. It's the story of, now pay attention right here, Jesus and Jairus. You've, you've read it before, right? Uh, you know the story. If we were to just summarize the story, it's about a man who has a sick daughter. Her, his daughter, Jairus' daughter, is sick unto death, correct? He comes to the Savior, and he asks the Savior for healing. Help my daughter. He believes that Jesus has mm, what his daughter needs, you know? All she needs is just a word or a touch from the master's hand. And you know the story, Jesus, uh, he says, uh, uh, all right, let's do it. And he heads to the house and, and the little girl is healed. Isn't that right? I mean, to tell you, everybody thinks it's, it's a miracle that the, the little girl is healed. She's resurrected, right? That's the story in a nutshell. However, when you read through some of these stories and you really look through the mind's eye of God, there are some other lessons to behold. And I want, to, I want us to point, I want to point one out uh, for us today. If we look through a different lens, we'll see another story that I think will bless us and help us in our journey of faith. Look at Mark 5. Uh, let's read a little bit of the story. Uh, verse number 21. It says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Now notice verse 24. Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And it's in this scene that another story unfolds. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it amazing how fluid life is? You know, I mean to tell you, you have, you, you just, you, you know, you're living life and all of a sudden, you know, one layer, then another layer. Uh, well, as Jesus is walking to this fellow's home to deal with the sick daughter, the Bible says uh, in verse number 25, there's a certain woman, a woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years, and, and in the crowd, what does she do? Well, she reaches out and she, she just touches, she just touches the Lord's clothing. And the Bible says, she, you, know, you know, Jesus says, who touched me? And as a result of that, he says to her, woman, thy faith hath made thee whole. I mean, just in the midst of it. We're not even really studying that story. But all of a sudden, before we get to the end of the first story, another story unfolds and we see another miracle uh, take part. You know, my, my suggestion is this, live life with your spiritual eyes wide open. You never, more, you never want to miss what God is doing. Amen? Because sometimes it's just uh, 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 on the way. It's kind of like when Moses was just out and about, all of a sudden there's a bush burning. Right? And had not Moses kind of pulled aside to see what was going on, he'd have missed something spectacular. Isn't that Right? And every once in a while, we live life with our spiritual eyes closed, and we miss all kinds of interesting things that God is trying to do. Well, pick up the story again, if you would, in verse number 35. While he yet spake, there came, so he's, you know, he's dealing with this woman with the issue of blood. Verse 34, he says unto her, thy faith hath made thee whole. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler uh, of the synagogue's house certain which said, now notice what they said. 
They said this, thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? Read on. And uh, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, now pick up the story with me for, for a moment. Here's Jesus and Jairus. Jairus has the ear of the master, and, and he's got the attention of the master, and he's got the presence of the master, and he's feeling right now pretty good. Say it with me, pretty good. I mean, to tell you, he's on his way uh, to where his little girl is, and he has every, I mean, to tell you, he's got every confidence that the Lord is going to heal this kid, Right? I mean, to tell you, Jesus says, let's go. Let's go take care of business. They're on their way when all of a sudden, there's an interruption. Say interruption with me. Interruption. Have you ever had an interruption? How many of us love interruptions? Sometimes they're not bad, you know. Uh, well, somebody comes from the ruler's house. Now, here's what he said. I, I, you know, sometimes we read it so matter-of-factly. But I kind of get this impression, this fellow's in a hurry. He's trying to get to where Jairus is because he wants to let him know what? What's he want to let him know? Your daughter just died. And so, I mean, probably without, without any kind of filter at all, he just blurts out, you know, hey, 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 your daughter just died. It's too late. Don't bother this man anymore. Isn't that what the Bible says? That's the modern day translation. Don't bother him anymore. And then all of a sudden, we just read the next verse. But, but, but pause for a second and think about how you would have felt if someone came running up, placed themselves right into your life, and said, hey, your daughter just died. Hey, your child just died. Hey, your spouse just died. I mean, to tell you, it had to be for Jairus, don't you agree? It had to be kind of like a punch in the belly. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, he had to probably, the wind had to be taken out of his out of his breath. I mean, I mean, he just had to, you know, kind of step back, maybe drop his head a little bit, right? I mean, your daughter just died. You're, you're, you're too late. Don't bother this man anymore. Nothing he can do. And I just kind of get the impression I have three daughters, and they're, they're dear to my heart. I don't even like when one of them stubs their toe. I mean, it used to break my heart to spank them. I used to say all the time, this hurts me more than it hurts you. And I know what they were thinking. Yeah, right. Why are you doing it then? What are you, a, you know, a sadist? You know, but it did. It used to break my heart. I rarely used to, rarely had to, Brother Will, rarely had I need to really spank my girls. I took it all out on my son. <laughs> he walks around today with a kind of a twitch, you know. It's hard, man. I, just, I can just imagine the feeling uh, that Jairus must have felt. Hey, your daughter is dead. It's too late. <laughs> but I want you to notice the response of Jesus. Now, look, look at verse 30, 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Uh, you, see, you see the response of Jesus there? Huh? Uh, he ignored, now listen, he ignores the message and the message, er, and the message, the interrupter, he ignores him completely. And he looks to uh, Jairus and he says to Jairus, uh, be not afraid, only believe. Huh? Think about that for a second. There, there's got to be, there's got to be a lesson there for you and I. There just has to be. Here's a father who has just delivered some significant news while in the very presence of Jesus, and the response of Jesus is simply he ignores the interruption. He looks at the father and says, fear not, only believe. And I thought about, I thought about that for a second. And I thought about that in relation to our life, and don't miss this next statement, please. I thought about this. What would our life be, would our life be any different if we would have just ignored some things? Think about that for a second. Take that in. Would your life 
would my life, would our life be any different today had we just ignored some things along the way? Huh? Uh, think about this. What if, when, what if when people would have said to you, or I, because they probably have, if you live and breathe, you probably have lived out this scenario. What if when somebody would have said to you, are you kidding me? You can't do that. Ah, what if when they would have said to you or I, <laughs> you don't have a skill set for that. What if when they said to you or I, uh, who in the world do you think you are? What if when they would have said to you or I, uh, man, I'll tell you what, uh, you, you just, there's no possible way you're going to be able to do that. I wonder if our life would have been any different if we had ignored that stuff. Huh? Think about this. There's people today that are defined by the things other people say and think. Huh? Look here. This is not a user-friendly world in which we live. And, and sad enough, you know, you don't even need to name the name of Christ to be belittled or mocked or criticized or hurt by words. When I was a kid, someone told me a lie. You know what they said? They said this, sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. Look up here for a second. That is a lie. Because I've been hurt more by words than sticks and stones. How about you? Now, there have been some people in the body of Christ that I would have loved to have slapped in the name of Jesus. How about you? Don't make me feel like John the Baptist, one crying in the wilderness. Huh? Isn't that right? <laughs> but we've refrained. And so, I've been saved for a number of years now. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, I've never hurt anybody with my hand or my foot, although I've wanted to. Uh, but I have hurt people with my words. Uh, been pastoring for 34 years. I've never been, I don't think, a couple, a couple old ladies would slap me once in a while just to joke. You know, I think Floss slapped me today. Uh, you know, but I, I've never been hit. I've never been kicked. I'm sure some folks would, wanted to hit me and kick me. Huh? But I've been hurt a lot by words. Huh? Think about this. Think about the people who are defined by the, the things they hear. Think about this. Uh, think about uh, the, the young people who have been demoralized by the criticism of a parent. Think about some young people who have been just demoralized by a, a coach or a teacher. And I'm sad to say this, even a spiritual leader. Huh? Because sometimes pastors will use pulpits as whipping posts. Or they use their authority to belittle people or... Huh? And if we're not real careful, listen carefully, if we're not real careful, that influence travels deep. And lasts long, it lasts long, and it, and it has a way of even influencing, even influence into the adult years. You know? We need to be careful with that. And so when, when this fella comes uh, and, and makes the statement, now pay attention right here, when he makes the statement, hey, your daughter is dead, Jesus completely ignores what he's saying. He doesn't say to Jairus, hey, hey, Jairus, look here, don't listen to him. He just completely ignores that message, and he looks to Jairus, and he says to him, fear not only belief. In other words, here's what he's saying. Pay attention, class. Here's what he's saying. Jairus, you have a decision to make right now. You're either going to listen to the voice of the Savior or the voice of another. Did you get that? There's going to come a time in your life and our life when we're going to have to make a decision. I'm either going to have to listen to the voice of my Savior or the voice of another. And when you look at the Scriptures, here's what you find. The Scriptures got a whole lot to say. Positive, powerful, right? Sometimes you might say negative, but it really isn't because you need negatives to get to the positive sometimes. 
Isn't that right? Boy, preacher, you're so negative. No, not really. I'm just trying to tell you the facts to get you to a better place. It's kind of like if, if Tyler, would you go out, when everybody bows their head today at the invitation, would you go out in everybody's car and disconnect the negative cable from their battery? Now, don't do that. I've learned that whatever you ask Tyler to do, he'll do like that. Don't do that. I was just teasing. Uh, but I guarantee you this, if he did, you wouldn't be able to start your car. You wouldn't be able to start your car. And so every once in a while, we need to be told, you know, hey, 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 that's not the best way to do it, but here's a better way to do it. It's not, hey, look here, you idiot. That's not the way you do it. You'll never learn if you just... No, because as soon as you use that tone of voice... Are you with me? So Jesus ignores, and he says to Jairus, you're going to have to make a decision now. You're either going to listen to the voice of your Savior or the voice of another. And the voice of the Savior was what? Fear not, only believe. Only believe. And listen carefully. I think in life we need to learn to make that same decision. Who are we going to listen to? Either the voice of the Savior or the voice of another. And when you listen to the scriptures, here's, here's what you come down to. There's, there's basically two foundational truths that we must understand. Here's the first one. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Go ahead and flash it up, guys. The first foundational truth is you and I understanding what God has made us to be. What has God made us to be? There's a great passage of scripture in the book of Genesis. That's the book of beginnings, right? And in Genesis chapter number uh, 1, verses 26 and 27, we learn what God made for us to be. Here's what it says. I got it up on a screen for you. Listen to the words. And God said, now God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Think about that for a second. Let that sink in. I know that's a familiar passage, and we read it so matter-of-factly. But think about the truth of that. God said, God said, let us make man. God the Father, God the Son, God the Let us make man in our image. Boy, that's special. Huh? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And all God's people said, Wow, wow, wow. Look here, that was a deliberate act. God made you and I just because he wanted to make you and I. <laughs> Let us make man in our image. And when you read on, here's, look here, here's, here's the truth. God made us for him. I like to believe that God made me for Donna. And Donna made, uh, and, and God made Donna for me. But the fact of the matter is, he made us for him. That's a deliberate act. And I'm trying to encourage those today who are living under the definition or the defining of someone who has criticized you and ridiculed you and told you over and over and over again, you just can't do that. You'll never be that. There's no way to accomplish that. You are what you are and just settle for that. Look here, I know we live in a society that says you can be, you can do anything you want to do. Isn't that the dream of America? That's why people move here, right? Man, in America, you can be anything until you become an American and realize Boy, there's a lot of things that'll hold you back and hold you down. And there's a lot of Christian folk who are living under this, under this, this cloud, you know, and believing this lie because you've been criticized and you've been ridiculed and you've been heard and you've been told over and over and over again. I counsel with people all the time, mostly uh, battered women who have been told they're just not worth it. You deserve to be smacked. You deserve to be hit. You deserve to be mistreated. Look here, look here, that's a lie. That's a lie. But we'll never be able to break that defining or that mold until we first come to understand a foundational truth and the foundational truth being God has made us to be what we are. Here's something interesting. Uh, what happens next is amazing. 
as you read on, God's fellowshipping with man until one day God could not fellowship with man anymore. Do you remember that story? Huh? And what he does next is amazing. So look here. Now think about this for a sec. Do I have your attention? So God creates Adam and his wife Eve for himself. He creates Eve for, of course, Adam because it wasn't good for that guy to be alone. By the way, it's really not good for any man to be alone. We make a mess of everything. Huh? When, when Donna's gone for a couple days, I can survive. When she's gone for a week, I don't know what to do. I'm serious. I, I just lose all sense of everything. I eat all the wrong th- I eat nothing but chocolate and peanut butter. <laughs> you know, I'm just a mess. You know, so it's not good for... So God makes Eve for... But basically, he made them for himself. And in the midst of this, they mess up. Right? They do something they should have never done. They sinned, right? And by the way, sin is not a mistake. Sin is a willful act of disobedience, correct? And it's never changed. But what happens next is amazing. Now, pay attention to this right here. Instead of starting over, instead of discarding Adam and Eve, and God could have, God could have said, to us, Holy Spirit, and, and God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Son, he could have said, uh, that didn't work, let's start over. Come on now, get with the program. He didn't. You know what he does? He redeems man. Huh? Genesis chapter number 3, great Bible verse, verse 21, says this, I think I got it on the screen there, uh, says this, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to teach us today, I'm trying to imply today, I'm trying to impress upon your heart today, I'm trying to get us to understand today just how special we are to God. He not only made us, but he then redeemed us. And through an act of mercy, now get this, he says in Genesis 3, in verse 22, the next verse, he says, And the Lord God said, Behold the man, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and live in this disobedient state forever. (laughs) Let's do this. Let's prevent that. Boy, that's an act of mercy. Huh? Huh? God creates man in his image. He creates man for himself. He creates man to fellowship. Man messes up. What does God do? He redeems man, brings him back into that fellowship. And then he establishes a way for man not to have to live in that disobedient state forever. And that's why today I said at the beginning of service, man, I'm so glad the Bible says Jesus is coming again and we're going to get out of here one day. Well, if it hadn't been for that situation there in the very beginning where God prevented man from eating of the tree of life, he'd have lived in that disobedient state forever. Boy, God is good. And here's the truth, friend. Listen carefully to this. God has made you and I, us, to be sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Now, I thank God for my earthly father. Been with the Lord. His, his death anniversary was just the other day. I think he's been with the Lord 19, 20 years, Don. Uh, so I haven't really seen my physical father, my earthly father, in a long time. But I had a good father. He got saved and lived for God and thanked the Lord for him. But he wasn't a perfect man. You know, in fact, I blame all my bad traits on him. <laughs> got to blame somebody, right? But my heavenly father's perfect. And you know what he's promised? He said that he would be a father to the fatherless. And he's been that to me for a long time now. Sons and daughters. Look here. He's created us to be sons and daughters. Not only that. Look here. He made us to reflect his image. Isn't that good? So as you and I begin to grow in our journey of faith and become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ, we reflect the image of Almighty God. And he's made us as eternal beings. So it doesn't end here. I mean, we go on to live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Isn't that wonderful? And I think maybe the best part, if that's not the best part, is he made us to enjoy him. Are you enjoying God? Are you enjoying your experience with God? 
I hope you are. I hope it's not just a Sunday morning thing. I hope it's not just a religion kind of a thing. I hope it's not just, man, I'm glad I'm saved, going to heaven kind of a thing. I hope you get to a place where you experience God personally. You know, where you enjoy Him. You know, where, where He becomes real to you. He made us to be. But He also made us to do. You guys with me? He's made us to do. There you go. He's made us to do. Not just be, but he, he made us to do. You know, the New Testament gives us a clear picture of God's desire for you and I as his children. When Jesus calls his team together in the gospel, talked a little bit about this with the men yesterday morning in Matthew's gospel chapter 4, right? Jesus is on the scene. Starts his ministry in chapter 3. Very first thing he does in chapter 4 is he calls some, some guys together to follow him. And you know who he called? Look here. Uh, he called the cream of the crop of society. <laughs> Didn't he? I mean, they were all educated doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs. Right? No, he called common, common folk. Called them right out of their, their commonality, right out of their lifestyle. Peter and... James and John, you know, the sons of thunder, soon angry ones, Matthew, the tax collector, right? I mean, he calls, he calls some folks, he calls George Riddell and Sal Yanizzi and Raji uh, Smith and Tyler Austin and what? Come on, man. Look here, if we were to, if you were to strip us of our phylacteries, Huh? I mean, if you were to see us in all, all natural, I don't mean our birthday suit. <laughs> but then you take away all the, all the things that God has done for us, you'd say, how in the world can God use somebody like Tyler Austin? How can he do that? Sal, you know, you've got to be kidding me. But that's, what, that's who he calls. And in chapter 4, he says this. He says to the team, he calls these men, and he simply says this, and I love this. He simply says, follow me. Right? And there was no, look here, there was no uh, protocol. There was no prerequisites after that. Right? Uh, he didn't say, uh, all right, guys, if you want to follow me, uh, go to the office there. Uh, there's a committee in there, and they're going to need to evaluate your credentials. Help me here. Huh? You got to make sure you got a, at least a bachelor's degree and you got to at least have a little bit of money in the bank and no debt at all. If you got credit cards, don't even, don't even go into the room. Huh? No, he just said, follow me. He knew what he was getting. But it didn't stop there, Ty. He said, follow me, and I'll make you a fisher of men. Or in other words, I like to look at it this way. If you follow me, I'll train you. If you follow me, I'll train you. Because nothing you've learned so far in life will help you to be what I need you to be. See, I was a manipulator. I was a whiner. I, I was deceitful. I was a sinner. I can't use any of that to become like Christ. Some of you are trying. Some of you are trying to manipulate your way into leadership. Some of you are trying to manip manipulate your way into blessing. No, don't work that way. Follow me and I'll train you. You got to leave all that behind. You know what I found out in the body of Christ, Bob? I find out this. When people don't live obediently, God can't bless them. And so then people have to manufacture their own blessings to make pretend God is blessing them. Boy, that's good preaching. Huh? I used to do that. I used to say, boy, that brother over there looks like he's getting blessed. I'm not getting that. I better go get it for myself and say God gave it to me. But God never gives you anything that will take you from him. God will never give you anything that will cost you more than you could afford to pay. Huh? <laughs> You'll get that next week. That will settle in. Are you with me? And so Jesus, he gathers together his team, and he says this, follow me and I'll train you. You know the very, very next thing he does, Matthew chapter number 5? He begins to train them. You know where you find yourself in Matthew chapter number 5? 
you find yourself on the Mount of Beatitudes. How many of you have been there? Have been there? I've been there a couple of times over in Israel. It's phenomenal. It's breathtaking. I got a chance to preach there several times right on the Mount of Beatitudes. I mean to tell you, mm, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. And I just thought about how Jesus gathered that group together and began to teach them. Now get this. He began to teach them what they needed to be before they could go out and do what he wanted them to do. See, you can't do it unless you be it. Yeah. You got quick fingers? Go to Matthew chapter number 5. It's just a couple of pages away. Matthew chapter number 5. And look, look, look. And seeing the multitudes, he went up, verse 1, into a mountain. When he was set, his disciples came unto him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying. Now, get this. He's in a classroom setting. And if you were up on the Mount of Beatitudes right now, Donald, I'll tell you, man, there's just some little clearings. You know what I would do, man? I got the people. I had a couple, maybe 30 people with me. And I just got them all to sit around, you know, looking out over the Sea of Galilee. Oh, man, it's gorgeous. And I just said to the folks, just close your eyes, and in your mind's eye, just picture Jesus gathering his team together, and now he's going to begin to teach them the valuable lessons of Christianity. This is what you need to be. What's he talk about? Quickly, he talks, blessed are the poor, blessed are they that mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are they which do hunger, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the poor in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness, on and on and on and on. Here's what he's saying. This is what you've got to begin to practice. There's no shortcuts. You can't put the cart before the horse. You'll never be able to uh, represent me and, and share my image if you don't first be me. Are you with me? Look here, your testimony, my testimony, our message is troubled when out of the same mouth comes bitter water and sweet. Huh? You can't come in here on Sunday morning and praise God and then go to work tomorrow and, and bad mouth your preacher and think you're going to lead people to Christ there or think they're going to want what you have. Why would they want what you have? You don't even want what you have. Say amen right there. Huh? <laughs> and so he's teaching them there, the Beatitudes. And Jesus seems to say, if you'll do this, you'll reflect my image. Isn't that what we want? Huh? I get so disappointed sometimes when, when, when I show up, when I'm revealed, when I'm there. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I'm dealing with a situation, and instead of being Christ-like, Sal comes out. Oh, I hate that. I hate that because I'm, I'm short-tempered. I'm, I'm, I can be snippet. I can be sarcastic. Whenever sarcasm comes out, sarcasm comes out, I know I'm not filled with the Spirit because I know how I feel when people are sarcastic. I don't like it. I'm not crazy about sar sarcastic people, and I try to fight that in me. You know why people are sarcastic? Because they're thin-skinned. They're self-absorbed. Self, uh, they have no self-confidence, and it's a defense mechanism. So the best way for me to hide my fear of you is to be sarcastic towards you. Where'd you get that tie at, Pet Boys? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying, Dave, right? So really, I'm just, I don't know how to respond with you. And instead of just saying, boy, brother, that's a, that's a really nice tie. And by the way, you did an awesome job singing this morning. I mean that with all my heart. You guys did an awesome job. Bless my heart. See, that's what ought to come out of our mouth. Huh? Are you with me? But then he says this, and I'm coming around third. I think I'm finished, right? Am I finished? My time up? I, I'm just, I'm new here. I have no idea. Oh, I'm the pastor? Oh, man. I got plenty of time. Woo, I just remembered I'm not a guest. Woo. Now, I will respect your time all the time, I promise. Uh, but notice this, notice this. He says to them, this is what you need to do. And then very clearly he says, this is, what you, this is what you need to be. And then very clearly he says, this is what you need to do. Look, look at Matthew 5 again. Let's read on. He says in verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its saltiness or savor, savor wherewith shall it be salted? It's henceforth uh, good for nothing but to be cast 
out to be trodden under the foot of men. You're the light of the world. So basically he says this to them. Once you, once you work on becoming what I want you to be, you'll then be able to do what I want you to do. What does he want us to do? It's real simple. Be salt and light. Be salt and light. That's a whole other series of messages. Be salt and light. That's our job. My job, look here, my job isn't to get me a big old sign and walk down uh, 322 Black Horse Pike, State Road 44, 42, or uh, whatever, 322, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why one road has three names. Eh, same thing in Florida. But our job, our job isn't to get a sign that says, you know, I'm against and, and fill in the blank and walk down 42. No, that's not what we're called to do. Salt and light. We're to live in such a way that we add salt, add flavor. That's what salt does. It adds flavor. It works as a preservative, right? So everywhere I go, yesterday my wife and I are at the, the shop, right? I'm supposed to be salt and light, right? I'm not going to walk by the counter that's selling or advertising abortion. Hey, God, God's against that. God forbid you do that. I'm leaving this. It's not, God's not calling me to do that. Now, am I against abortion? 155.5%. But I'm not going to walk down 42, Roger, with a sign, I'm against abortion. Huh? What's that going to do? It's going to magnify the fact that I'm against abortion. But if I walk down 42 with a big old smile on my face and hand that gospel tracts, hey, Jesus loves you, man. So do I. Come over to Open Bible Baptist Church. Got a great new pastor. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm glad you laughed at that. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? Because if we're not careful, we can, we can, we can become like John the Baptist. Did you ever watch the show The Chosen? It's, it's, a neat, it's a neat rendition. I like it because it kind of puts things in perspective. I love when Jesus meets John the Baptist and he says, John, you're losing weight. You still, you still eating that diet of... It's kind of be, like being lighthearted. I think sometimes we think Jesus was just... All business. I'm against everything. No, man, you have, you have no clue what your Savior was like if you think he was like that. Just think about where he was, who he walked with. who he Try to be best friends with Peter. Matthew, come on, man, right? Go out and be salt and light. He concludes with verse 16 where he says, let your light so shine before men so that when they see your good works, they'll pat you on the back and say, man, you is something. No, when they see your good works, they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. And so what he's saying is, see that, let your light so shine, shine in such a way. You and I, we need to have directed light. Look here, if all your light does is shine upon you, your light's shining in the wrong direction. If your light shines upon me, your light's shining in the wrong direction. Directed light points everybody to, to the Savior. To the Savior. He said, if I be lifted up, he didn't say, if you lift up your pastor. No, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. Directed light. Let your light so, so shine. Let it shine in such a way that when men see your good works, well, it's going it's to reflect. You with me? Listen carefully. What would our life be like if we just ignored some things? Well, let's, let's, let's take it to right now. What will our life be like if we ignore some stuff? I mean, when you come in and the sister sitting next to you says, where did you get that dress? And the brother says, is that tie from the 40s? Huh? Or somebody looks over and says, is that a King James Bible? Or why in the world are you sitting there singing a song and raising your hand and praising God? Were you Pentecostal? Help me, church. I thought, I thought going to church was about you and him, not you and the person sitting next to you. What if, what if, just what if, Dean, what if moving forward we ignore stuff like that? 
and just said, you know what? God bless you too. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the word. And that man up there is going to preach it in just a little bit. Don't you think that would change everything? Don't you think more people would come in feeling this is a friendly place? I'm not going to be judged by what Bible I bring in or what kind of clothing I'm wearing or if I have ink on my body or piercings in my face. Look here. Somebody walks in and says, I hate everybody. God bless you, man. So glad you're here. I'm not everybody. I'm Pastor Yanizzi. I don't know who everybody is, but I'm not, that's not my name. Are you with me? What if we'd ignore some stuff? <laughs> See, there's some things we need to understand, and I'm going to quit. For us to be what God wants us to be and do what God wants us to be or do, we need to ignore some voices. We need to ignore the voice of failure. When somebody comes along and says, you know what? I didn't think you ever amount to anything, and you haven't. I want you to say this with me. I want you to say this with me. Ignore that voice. You ready? When somebody comes along in the voice of criticism, where they begin to nitpick everything about you. Ignore that. When somebody comes along with a voice of hurt and their intention is deliberately to hurt you. Ignore that. When somebody comes along and they begin to doubt everything that you're about, your sincerity, your honesty, your... Ignore when self flares up and says, you know what, I've about had it. Nobody cares for me. They're a bunch of phonies. They're a bunch of fakes. I'm not going back there. I quit. You know, I told my brother here yesterday, or Friday, Brother Tyler, when I was a young pastor, probably two, three, four years into the ministry, and this is the truth, I used to quit every Sunday night. I did. I'd go home and I'd say to my wife, that's it, I, I quit. Now, I never told anybody. Right? So, Tyler, if you quit Sunday nights, don't tell me. I won't expect to see you on, on Monday morning. But I would quit every Sunday night. I mean, just frustration. Come up, you know, Roger, you preach your heart out, man. You bear everything. And all of a sudden, people are just, you know, I quit. Now, Monday morning, I would rehire myself. <laughs> you know? Because I was just listening to the voices. Listening to the voices. I don't care who you are, your, thin, your skin cannot grow that thick that something is not going to affect you. I've been doing this a long time. I've pastored a lot of people. I am still very much affected by... I am. I, I, but it no longer consumes me, controls me, nor dictates my outcome. You know why? I don't listen to those voices. I try to listen for the voice of my Savior. Have you ever, have you ever heard the statement, ignorance is, ignorance is bliss? Now, the truth is, sometimes it's just plain ignorant. <laughs> right? But when it comes to ignoring criticism and doubt and hurt, and ignorance just may be bliss. Because bliss means full of joy. I mean, almost empty-headed, heavenly-minded. And when you listen to the voice of the Savior and ignore the voice of others, that ignorance is bliss. Amen? I'm not sure what you're going through today, but I know this. There's a lot of hurt, a lot of criticism, a lot of difficulty in our world. And sometimes it enters into our church, all churches. If you're feeling that way today, may you be encouraged. Just draw close to the Savior listen for his voice. Amen? Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we rejoice in the fact that we get to come to church, we get to hear your word, and we get to do what you've invited us to do. But prior to that, we must determine we're going to be what you want us to be. And that's not an easy task for us because we carry with us flesh. Flesh is anti-God. It doesn't want to submit. Our flesh wants to do its own thing. And I would pray you'll help us to surrender constantly to you and allow our spirit to dictate our mind and our will so that we might get our body, our flesh, in subjection. Help us. May we not be defined by the ugliness, by what others have said, 
by the criticisms or the hurtful words, but help us to be be defined by the, 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 the voice of our Savior, by the example of our Christ. And if there's someone here this morning who has yet to put their faith or trust in the Lord Jesus, we pray for them today that maybe today they'll feel comfortable in this setting to get that taken care of. To come, let us show them in the Bible the gospel message and what they need to do to be saved. God help us, we pray in Jesus' name and amen. Let's stand together. Piano is playing. Our heads are bowed just for some privacy. Let me encourage you. God spoke to your heart this morning. Make the altar your friend. You know, the altar is the place where you alter your life. It's where you make changes, right? God spoke to you today. Let me encourage you. Leave your place. Come. Find a little spot at the altar. Have prayer. Maybe you need somebody to pray with you. I'll pray with you. One of our staff pray with you. One of our deacons will come pray with you. My wife is here. She'll pray with you. Let us help you. Let us encourage you. Maybe you're going through a difficult time. Whatever it might be. The altar's open. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Yes, indeed. You come. Maybe you're here today and you need to be saved. We'd like to pray for you and encourage you. You come. Father, we do thank you for all that you are and do. We love you today. We pray that you'll seal our minds and our hearts. And as we leave this property today, may we take the responsibility and the accountability of being what you want us to be. Salt, light, moving into this world, showing the reflection of Christ. Wherever we go, whoever we meet with, may we see them as opportunities to to just influence for Christ. May we be Jesus to somebody today and this week. And we'll thank you for it. Bless your people, we pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Be seated just for a moment. We'll get you out of here in just a couple of minutes, I promise. A few things we want to recognize this morning. The very first thing we want to do is we're going to get a chance to see the book of Acts, uh, book of Acts in action because God has blessed uh, Open Bible now with some new members. And we're going to have them come forward. I'm going to ask our deacons to join me uh, down here. And we'll give them the right hand of fellowship. And we're going to welcome in uh, three folks into membership uh, this morning. Do I have all their names here, Tyler? You you got them right there. Thank you. Appreciate that. You can hold on to those if you would. Uh, Let me invite uh, Cheryl Brown to come forward. And Quentin Millen. And Quincy Millen. Is that how you say the last name? Millen? Great. This here, of course, is Cheryl. God bless you, Cheryl. And we have Quincy and Quentin coming forward. Two good young men. Praise the Lord. The book of Acts talks about how the Lord added to the church daily, right, such as should be saved. So we're glad. They that gladly received his word and were baptized were added unto them. And so these folks have met the requirement of membership here at Open Bible. They're saved, baptized. And, uh, and then they've gone through a, a, it's just a new members class. So they know what they're doing, what they're joining, right? What they're, what they're accepting here. And uh, we're glad about that. And so we want to give the right hand of fellowship to all three of these individuals today. We'll begin with Miss Cheryl here. God bless you, my dear sister. This is for you. It's the right hand of fellowship. Glad to be your pastor. Look forward to serving you and with you. Amen. God bless you. We have a special gift for you. Brother Tyler, you want to give her that? Fellas, you want to welcome Ms. Cheryl into membership here? These are some of the finest men of our church. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we got these twin brothers, and I think, I think 
Quincy's the oldest. Man. <laughs> I'm working on that forever, and I got it wrong again. So let's, let's start with the youngest then, right? Is that you? Yep. All right. <laughs> and so, Quentin, God bless you, man. I look forward. Quincy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody got one of them Sharpies? You got a Sharpie and we'll put it on their forehead. Quincy, I look forward to serving as your pastor. You look to be a, you look to be a fine young man. And I'm looking forward to serving with you. And same thing with you, Quentin. God bless you. Looking forward to serving as your pastor. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> well, that's wonderful, isn't it? You know, there are certain things that never get old. This never gets old, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for this, this group right here. Father in heaven, thank you so much for these three individuals. We're looking forward to serving with them. I'm looking forward to serving as their pastor. And we're looking forward to seeing just great growth in their lives. Continue to use them as you are here at, BBC, uh, at Open Bible. And I pray that their future will be continue to be blessed. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. Well, amen. I got a BBC slipped out of there. Did you hear it? That's going to happen every once in a while. Sorry. Hard to teach an old dog new tricks, you know? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, you know we have Master's Club. Tonight's going to be a special Master's Club night. We want you to be here and participate in that. But um, there's an award, in fact, two awards we want to give to the same person um, that just uh, stands out above and beyond. This here is called the Triple Crown Award for a Master's Club. And let me tell you what this award is. It, this, this certificate represents the completion of all requirements for the Triple Crown Award, which is presented only to those who have faithfully completed the Ambassador's Discipleship Program. In order to earn the Triple Crown Award, a clubber must earn one Ambassador Crown for each year, which requires memoriz, memoriz, uh, memorizing Scripture, completing Discovery Bible Study books, earning uh, select merit badges, and demonstrating an honorable Christian testimony. This prestigious honor signifies that this young uh, person is truly an ambassador for Christ. Amen? That's, that's special. And this award this year, uh, with this uh, trophy, goes to William McDonald. God bless you, William. That's awesome. Will, you got a camera there? take a picture of this. Man, I'm proud of you, young fella. Thank you. God bless you, man. That's for you. you. Look at that. That's wonderful. Amen. Hey, stay right there for a second. There's a second award. This one goes to, uh, this is the Ambassador Award. Hereby named an award winner is in recognition of diligent effort in accomplishing all four Ambassador Crowns, completing 16 Discovery Books, earning 46 Merit Badges, and memorizing 90 Scripture Memory Verses. Wow. By earning this award, Will McDonald will be eligible to receive a college scholarship, uh, uh, scholarship come his senior year of high school, if so chosen. Amen? And that goes to Brother Will as well. God bless you, man. Proud of you. That's awesome. Great job. So inside there are some gift cards, and whenever you want to spend them, I'll go with you. You let me know, okay? Chick-fil-A and good stuff like that. Praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome? That's great. Congratulations. Good young people like that. Amen. And then finally, I just want to just recognize a young man uh, in our ministry studying for the ministry and really serious about the Lord. He's doing a great job. Uh, this Wednesday, he's going to leave and go to the wilds and serve uh, nine weeks, nine weeks at the wilds as a counselor. And, uh, and here's the thing, um, he's going to learn some things, because those teenagers are going to teach him some things, you know, and, and then he's going to be able to influence those young people for the cause of Christ. It's not an easy task. It's not like he's going to camp, not at all. You know, that's not the way it is. You know, he's going to be working for nine weeks. Someone's been a blessing to him, has covered most of his cost, but there's about $240 left over that needs to be paid. And as a church, I think it'd be a great investment if we pay it for him. And so I want Nathan, if you come on up here, Brother Nathan, if you would, we're going we're gonna to take care of that for him. And uh, I want you to go ahead on Wednesday as you leave for the wilds and may God bless you and use you in just unique ways this upcoming summer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on up here.
God bless you, young man. Praise the Lord. Be praying for you. Hey, let, let's, pray, let's pray together for Nathan, okay? Father in heaven, we pray for this young man that as he goes this summer to work with teenagers that will come from really across America, that you'll use him in wonderful ways to be an influence. May he carry what he's been taught in his home and what he's been taught in his church, what he's been taught in his college classes. May he carry it with him, and may he see it all work for the benefit of another. And then use those teenagers in his life to mold him, teach him patience, and teach him how to deal with kids that are kind of ornery and uh, prepare him for future ministry. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Your church is proud of you. God bless you. Amen. What a wonderful day. Hey, be in prayer for Don and I. We do need to fly back out tonight. We'll be heading back to Florida, and uh, we're going to work this week in loading up our truck and moving up here uh, the first week of June. And so as of June 5th, we'll be here full time. We're excited about it. Amen. Brother Tyler. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful service and a great message and just a wonderful to see these things taking place, the awards and uh, the prayer and what's happening here at this church. Isn't it great to be a part of Open Bible? Isn't it great to be a part of Open Bible? <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure. Uh, that's not something to ignore. All right, wonderful. I'm so thankful for the message this morning. It spoke to my heart. You're a visitor. It's a great place to be, attend, uh, be here today and attend on a regular basis. And we are thankful that you have visited today. I pray that you'll be welcomed and encouraged and blessed. And also that uh, we want to get your information from you so we can give you a gift. In just a matter of uh, moments here, we have actually a welcome center. And back in the, at your right, as you leave, if you would stop by there, turn in a connection card. A connection card is right in the pew in front of you. And if you would just start to fill that information out and just simply hand that to the welcome center, and they'll give you a gift in exchange for that connection card. If you're a regular, we have an offering. The men will be uh, at the doors, and they'll have an offering plate. If you're a visitor, we don't ask that you give. But if you're a regular, let's be faithful in our tithes and offerings. A couple of things that are coming up. Are you listening? A couple of things that are coming up very soon. Next week is Memorial Day, and Memorial Day weekend we'll have an AM service, and that'll be the entirety of the services for next Sunday. And then on June 5th, the installation Sunday, pastor just mentioned this, that'll be his first Sunday as uh, the pastor here officially. I mean, he's been the pastor, but we're going to make sure to install him there on that day. And we'll have a family fellowship, always good to go with food. And we need you to sign up. And for that, if you would, on a connection card, if you haven't done so yet, it's an opportunity to do that. So if you would do that as well. Tonight, tonight is Master Club Award Night, and we'll be giving many awards. We'll also get to have a chance to hear from some of the children. More or less, it's going to be a children's service. Some preaching, some singing, and just a blessing, some videos, some encouraging things. We want you to be a part of it. You want to attend and be an encouragement to them. And by your presence being here tonight, that will encourage them greatly. And so if you could be here tonight at 5 o'clock, we have service once again this evening. Every Sunday evening we do, but uh, this is a special service uh, geared in for the children's ministry and for Master Club. We're looking forward to it. The children are preparing, teachers are ready, and these kind of things. And if you are a child, it reminds you, be here at 445. All right, parents, you hear that? Because you're the one driving them. For 4.45 if you would, and that would be wonderful. Everyone else at 5 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you this evening. Let's close out with a word of prayer. Lord God, I thank you so much for the service today. And Lord, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. It always is. And Lord, I thank you that we have been able to be here today, what's taken place, the singing, the, the preaching of God's word, the expounding upon it, the way it's made so applicable. I pray that we will now apply it to our lives and to our walk as we go out these doors. May we truly be that salt and light that you so desire of us so that you are glorified. You are worthy and worth it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.